Hey guys, this is Lucas from Better Coding Academy. And in this Git tutorial video, we are going to be talking about Git Ignore. Now this is something that's uh, very, very commonly used by myself and by many others as well. And I'm going to be teaching you how to use it, the main ideas behind it, and how you best implement it within your Git project. So the way that Git Ignore works is it basically ignores certain files uh, based on a certain glob pattern type. And I'll be explaining that in a bit more detail, but basically it helps you ignore certain files based upon their file name uh, from ever going into to your Git repository. So for example, uh, let's just set up a very basic Git ignore here, jump straight into it. Say we have a file, the file must be called .git ignore. It can be in any directory and I'll be explaining uh, the relevance of the directories in a little bit, but let's just have one here at the top level. And in here, we're going to write that um, any file called um, forbidden dot js is not allowed. So once we write this, if we do a git status, you see that git ignore appears inside of our untracked files. That is fine. Git ignore is meant to be committed into your git repository. If you don't commit git ignore, how is git meant to know which files to ignore? So git ignore must be included. Uh, and let's now try to create a file called forbidden.js. So all we have to do is create the file with that name. We don't have to add anything. Uh, and you see now this one here has gone gray. Once it's gone gray, if you actually do git status here on the side, you see that we actually cannot see forbidden.js. And the reason for that is because Git is already picking up on this Git ignore files contents. And it's realizing that forbidden.js is well forbidden. It's ignored and it's not meant to be included here. So if we even change this a little bit, say to dot, uh, forbidden.jsx, you see now all of a sudden this file becomes green. And once we do that, you see it appears over here. Let's change this back, go back to JS, instantly grayed out. And then if we do a git status over here, forbidden.js is now gone. So that's how uh, git ignore works in essence. And even if we do like git add dot, uh, it still won't show to so git status, still just that one file. Uh, let's just reset this real quick git status and we have that there. Uh, and let's just remove this for now and maybe also remove forbidden.js. So first let's talk about why you would want to use this. Well, there are two main things I see here. Number one is you don't really want to include build files. So there are going to be certain files which relate to your build that you do not want to include. I'm going to show you an example now based upon uh, Node.js. So inside of Node.js, there is this concept of a directory called Node modules. I'm gonna show you how that works. So I'm just gonna really quickly do this bit here. If you don't understand how this works, that's fine. Basically. Uh, node modules is a directory of pre-built packages that help you enhance your code. Uh, and these packages come from the NPM repository. So if you're using Python, it might be something like pip. Uh, if you're using like Rust, I think that one's called Cargo. Uh, Go has one as well. Basically, most programming languages have their own package manager. PHP has Composer, so on and so forth. Uh, it's essentially the same thing. So let, let me just show an example here now. Let's just say we have a package JSON file and we're going to do something like say yarn add and we add a few dependencies. So let's just add a few. Let's say we have um, Express for some reason. Uh, we might also include like MySQL, uh, might also include SQLize, something like that. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. The idea here is that we're including stuff. Once we've done that, you see we have node modules over here. Now this directory is full of a lot of stuff. If you actually have a look at the size of this directory, we can uh, have a look here real quick. You notice that this directory has a size of 11 or 18.5 megabytes. It says 11 here, so it's 18 here. Kind of weird. Um, but basically this one's huge. Now, firstly it's huge, but that's not really the reason why we don't want to commit. Sometimes we have large directories that have to be committed. Say if you have a directory of images that are relevant to your project, so on and so forth. Um, but in this case here, we do not want to commit node modules because node modules can be built purely from the data inside of package.json. So even if I were to delete node modules and I were to type yarn again, it would automatically reinstall all of those packages with no problem whatsoever. And you see, I have node modules, the exact same layout, exact same files every single time. So it's completely dependent upon the values of package.json and yarn.lock. So I actually don't need to commit this. So if I wanted to remove it, I just type node modules and put a forward slash at the end to represent that it's a directory. I don't need the forward slash, but if I don't put the forward slash, it would also get rid of any files that I call node modules as well. Um, in this case here, obviously you can't do that because this one already exists, but it can also pick up on subdirectories and this one will be ignored as well. Uh, whether or not you want that to be the case uh, really depends, it's up to you. If I put the forward slash back in, you see that this one here is now green. So basically uh, that's the difference there, um, but I'll get into more detail on exactly how that works works later on. Just know that if you don't include the forward slash at the end, it ignores both uh, the file and the directory. Uh, if you 
put a forward slash at the end, it only ignores it for the directory. So now if I do a git status here, you'll see we have package JSON and yarn.lock, but we do not have node modules, which is what we want here. Now in the case of Node.js, if you are doing any sort of Node.js or React project, what I've found to be really handy is instead of writing this file yourself, and this is also the case if you're using other programming languages, uh, I wanna show you something inside of Chrome. So inside of Chrome here, let's just go to github.com slash github slash git ignore. So this is one of the uh, repositories that GitHub themselves actually published, and it's uh, a collection of useful Git ignore templates. So there's one here for a lot of languages, and I'm sure there's one uh, suitable for what you're trying to work on at the moment. Now, the one I'm going to be having a look at is the one for Node. So they have a file called node.gitignore, and this includes a whole bunch of stuff that you generally want to ignore inside of a Node.js system. So in order to install this, it actually makes it quite easy. Um, we can do this inside of Node.js. Um, in the command line here, we can do npx git ignore node. Once you do this, what will happen is it will automatically create a gitignore file for type node and put it in this current working directory. So you see over here we have this whole file written out. Uh, we've got node modules, we've got uh, logs. Oh, so this added this this is what we had before and it added it to the end. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Basically it generates this file here. Uh, we've got log stuff, we've got runtime data, whatever that is. A whole bunch of stuff here, whether it be uh, with yarn, with cache parcel, all this kind of stuff, it's all here. And basically it just, it's a list of stuff that you generally want to ignore. So this is a really handy way of getting a project set up and ready to go. Having a good ignore that you'll be able to mostly stick with uh, for the most part throughout the duration of your project. So that being said, uh, let's continue talking about when you would use git ignore. So one of the cases is if you have what we call build artifacts. So build artifacts, uh, basically these are files which are uh, basically put together as the result of a build process. And those files generally do not uh, need to be committed because those files can usually be generated on the spot. So that includes stuff like node modules. Generally that includes stuff also like your dist directory. Um, if that is like just purely compiled code, you might not want to commit that as well. Um, there are other files as well that you would not want to commit. And those files generally refer to configuration or any sort of credential related files. So you might have seen this pattern before called .env. And this is part of what we call the 12 factor app development. You see my one here has already gone gray because uh, my git ignore file actually ignores that. So it's under .env environment variables. It chooses to automatically ignore that. But basically what this file contains is usually a lot of stuff relating to passwords and relating to configuration that helps your app connect to database servers and stuff like that. So for example, we might have something in here like a DB URL, and this might be something like MySQL. Uh, we might have some like some user and then some actual legitimate password, whatever that is, at uh, some.private.host. Uh, and then, you know, port 3306 or whatever. So basically this is not the kind of stuff that you'd want to commit because if you commit this onto GitHub and what would happen is if this repository ever gets taken by someone else, or if ever you have say a developer come onto your team, uh, who's maybe a contractor, maybe they get a copy of your code and then they can still access your database and just, it just allows there to be a ton of security flaws that you really don't want uh, to be the case. So generally when it comes to credentials, when it comes to any sort of sensitive or private information, you generally speaking do not want to commit it in of your Git repository because uh, the idea of Git is that even if you remove the file and you you know push it on later on, uh, technically it is possible to remove it, but at that point your code is already out there, so to speak, even if your code is a private repository. So it's a good idea to ignore those kinds of files, like the .m file is one of those that you'd ignore. So now let's talk about a few common patterns when it comes to using Git ignore, uh, and these are ones that I personally like to use. So I'm going to do is just remove these three here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these two files as well because those are just for demonstration purposes, and I'm going to create a blank git ignore file. So let's just say we have this file here. What's the difference between having this here and having it in a subdirectory? Well, basically, uh, the lower down you put it, the less effect the git ignore file has. So for example, this git ignore file here versus this one inside of a folder. If I have a folder here and I create a file called .git ignore, uh, anything inside of this .git ignore only affects this folder, this directory here. It doesn't affect the whole repository. So that's also a nice way to kind of scope the things relating to your git ignore. Um, one of the things that people tend to do a lot, uh, and I've seen this pattern come up a lot of times, is let's say you have some sort of, I don't know, uploads directory or something where files can get uploaded or can get included, but you don't want to include them as part of your commit or part of your git repository. Say we have a directory here, um, I don't know, like private assets or something like that. Uh, and then inside of here, you wanna have a git ignore. And basically what you want to do is ignore every single file inside of private assets. 
Well, what you can do is um, following what we call the glob pattern, and you can search this up uh, on the internet yourself. We're going to type or dot or, and this basically uh, means any file with any extension whatsoever, we're going to ignore it. Now, by doing that, the problem is that that also ignores dot git ignore. And that's a problem because if we ignore git ignore the next time when you download it, it won't have git ignore, so it won't ignore anything, so on and so forth. Basically, it doesn't work, right? So what we have to do is after this line, we're going to do not dot git ignore. So basically, even though we're going to ignore everything, we're still going to keep uh, tracking dot git ignore. So basically this says not to ignore uh, this file here. So now you see git ignore is uh, tracked. And if we check here, you see git status, it still shows up uh, under private assets. We can do that and you see that file there. However, if I were to include something else, like say uh, password.txt, this has a password in there or something. Even if I do get status, you see that it does not come up. So this is a pattern that comes up relatively often. So I thought I would show you that one. Now, with that being said, let's talk a little bit uh, about if I write a file name inside of here, say I do math.js and I ignore this file, but this file has already been added. If I do get status here, you notice that we, we've removed that file. That's fine. Let's do git add dot get status. And you'll notice we have a new file dot get ignore, but this one here is not being ignored. So what's the deal with that? Because we've already committed it and we're already tracking it. So by even putting it inside a uh, get ignore here, it doesn't actually do anything. If we want to start ignoring math.js, there are two real things we need to do here. Number one, obviously add it into git ignore. The other thing we want to do is actually remove this file. Now we don't need to remove, remove it as in like actually get rid of the file because uh, maybe we might actually need it. But what we need to do is we need to tell Git that from Git's point of view, stop tracking this file, treat it as if it's been deleted. And the way we do that is we type git rm hyphen hyphen cached math.js. So once this happens, you see that the file is still here, but now it's been marked with a D. And the reason it's that is because this file is marked as deleted. Uh, it's been deleted here, the file is still here. And if we were to commit this, what would happen is this file would no longer be part of the Git repository. It would act like it's been deleted uh, in the next commit, but then it would still exist on our local machine and we can still interact with it, so on and so forth. And from now on, if we were to add any sort of file called math.js in any subdirectory, say path to math.js, uh, even this file here would get ignored because we did uh, math.js there like so. If we only want to ignore math.js at the top level, or I guess at the level where the git ignore file is included, uh, then we need to just put a forward slash in the front there. You see this one becomes ignored and this one here still is tracked. So I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff here. Let's just reset this repo back to where it was. And let's see here, everything is clean and all of our changes have been reverted. So that's all I've got for you in this video. I hope you've learned something about using Git Ignore in your own personal and professional projects. This has been Lucas from Better Coding Academy and see you guys later.